The world's most powerful word is a word you probably rarely use, unless you're a psychology professor or were born in the 1700s. The word is volition. Volition is the act of making a choice or decision, the manifestation of our free will. You use volition every time you say yes to something, and all those yeses, they really add up. Well thought out yes, can lead to a lifetime of fulfillment, while just one careless yes can lead you down a path you never imagined. We've all been there. A concept from behavioral psychology called foot in the door explains how volition leads to behavior change. And it's a bit sneaky. Now you can use this technique to persuade someone else to do something or to persuade yourself to stay focused on your values and goals. Let's break it down. In a classic experiment conducted by Friedman and Fraser in 1966, a researcher went door to door asking homeowners to put up a large, unattractive sign in their yard hmm? with the words, drive safely. Predictably, most homeowners declined. The researchers then tested a separate group of homeowners with a smaller request. Instead of a big, ugly yard sign. They asked them to sign a simple petition for safe driving. A few weeks later, the researchers returned to the group that agreed to sign the petition and then asked them to put up the large sign. This time around, many more agreed. It's fantastic. This is the foot in the door phenomenon in action. People are more likely to agree to larger commitments after making smaller, seemingly insignificant commitments. In other words, small yeses lead to bigger yeses. Part of what makes the foot in the door technique work are the principles of commitment and consistency. Once we've connected a commitment to our identity, we're more likely to keep that commitment, to stay consistent with how we view ourselves. Sign that petition, and well, you're now an advocate for safe driving. Rejecting the yard sign later would go against your commitment to the cause. Do you even care about safety? Funny you should should ask. In 2017, my team at Boncom used commitment and consistency to reduce roadway fatalities in Utah by 11.5%. Working with the Department of Transportation, we encouraged parents and teens to make commitments related to distracted driving. The small commitments made a big impact, saving people's lives on the road. Now here's an example of how you can use this same technique to make and keep commitments that are aligned with your values. Many religious people use clothing or symbols to reinforce their commitment to their faith. For Sikhs, the turban isn't just a head cover. It's a daily reminder of their dedication to the values of equality and service. Putting on the turban is a small but powerful decision because it makes bigger future decisions easier. And if you're not religious, here's another example. Placing family photos in your workspace is a simple act, but every time you see them, they'll remind you of your values and goals, helping you stay focused on what matters most. The same is true for mementos, wedding rings, and tattoos. When you see and touch them, they bring your focus back to your commitments. Unless, of course, those commitments were made in haste. Yikes. And that is the power of volition. You're free to act, to say yes, to petitions, to your lover, to the values you hold closest. Every yes holds power, for better or worse. With strategy and foresight, you can transform all those little yeses into meaningful lifelong commitments. Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl said it best. Between the stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space lies our freedom and power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So before you give out another flippant yes, think about the path that it's putting you on and how it might influence future decisions. If it's a path you want to be on, say yes. And if it's a yes that might lead you down a path that isn't in your best interest, say no.